Hello. Ayan. Sige, better siguro to. Baka mas okay yung frequency niya. So, once again, no? Uh, we are on the last of this one. And hopefully, hindi po kayo magpapahuli. Okay? And speaking of magpapahuli, hopefully, guys, hindi din kayo magpapahuli with as part of our campaign, as part of our series also na G-Sama ka, we have a campaign that we are doing. We actually launched this on the first week pa lang ng ating series na to. And it's called Be One in One. And the words that you see there below, yung engage, explore, grow, serve, and bear fruit, those are actually uh, stages of where you can mature and where you can actually grow in terms of your faith. So I know for sure that every one of us here would like to grow and mature in terms of their faith. Tama ba? Meron bang ayaw nilang mag-grow dito, ayaw nilang mag-mature? Oh, di ba? Gusto natin lahat, di ba? So if you guys are that exactly that person, we want to help you out mature, okay? We want to help you out grow in terms of your faith. Gusto nyo bang makita yung sarili nyo, not just from the engaged, but of course, do papunta hanggang sa bear fruit. So we have this campaign called Be One in One. And I encourage all of us, hopefully, no, to be part of this one. All you have to do, is to ask your small group leaders. For those of you guys na coming in for the first time, ano ba yung small group leader? We're gonna tell you a little bit later on of what is that all about. But once again, no, hopefully lahat po tayo kasama sa ating journey or sa ating campaign na be one uh, in one. And I am encouraging also all of our small group leaders who are here and who are not here, okay? Uh, this afternoon, uh, I hope you guys that you will really promote this, okay? Sa mga small group ninyo so that you can actually journey and Kaya yung tagline natin here, I don't know if you can see it, it's actually called Bring One Student to This Journey in One Year. Okay? And speaking of journey, okay, sa ating series ngayon na G Samara, we have been through uh, a journey of and navigating uh, some truths, okay? in the past three weeks nung series natin na G Samara. So what are those truths that we have no, in the past discussed so far? One of which is that, that we are all sinners. Remember that? We're actually here, right? Remember that story of that uh, immoral woman, that prostitute woman who poured in that expensive perfume at the feet of Jesus. She was crying and all. Diba? Yun yung ano natin. And what we said and what we realized in that particular story is that all of us, none of us, is actually good. Right? Walang, walang kahit sino sa atin can actually save themselves. Right? That we are all Sinners. That's one of the things that we actually made sure that everyone has to be on board with that. But not only that we are sinners, on the second week, ito na, ilalala nyo itong story nito, another immoral woman, remember? The life of the prophet Hosea, whom God asked him to marry an immoral woman again, right? A prostitute woman. Just to make sure that everyone would know that this is how God loves you. Right? That is an exhibit of God. Diba? Ginamit niya yung, yung life of this prophet Hosea to tell us, you know what? I know that you guys are sinners, but I love you. So much so that God loves us up to what point? That Jesus has to die for us. So these are the three truths, right? So far that we have been navigating here sa ating series na G Samaka. And what we also said during this time was, yeah, these are the truths, right? We are sinners. God loves us for sure and that Jesus died for us. These are truths. But the thing is, what are you going to do with this truth, right? Because this ones, this will never change. That we are sinners, God loves you, and of course, Jesus died for you. But the most important question that you're going to have to ask yourself personally is, so ano ngayon, right? What are you going to do with all of this truth? And remember, we said na meron tayong dalawang responses, right, to this one. Knowing that we are sinners, God loves us, and Jesus died for us, we have two kinds of responses. The other one, or the first one, and I hope that you will not take this response, is to actually what? Object and reject, right? Because God cannot force you to actually believe this. But let me tell you this, that even if you object and reject, these truths will never change. But God is just giving you the free will to actually respond to this truth, right? So either you object and reject. And like I told you, I hope and I pray that you will not go down that route of actually objecting and rejecting. Because I know that while following Jesus, by the way, will, not, will never make your life easy. Of course, God will bless you when you follow Jesus. But can I also tell you that somehow, some way, it will not make your life easy. So if you're here this afternoon, 
because you have a problem, you have a burden. For sure, God can actually solve that. But if you're only here just to make sure that your life will be easier, I am sorry to tell you, but that is not the purpose of Jesus. You know, following Jesus will not make your life easy. But you know what? Your life will be better. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be better. So I hope you're going to be a person who will not settle for what is easy, for what is comfortable, but for what is what? Better. Because that is the offer of Jesus. So I hope you will not go down that route of knowing this, but you will object and reject. But I hope that you will go to the second response. What is the second response? It's to believe and to receive. You believe these truths, and you know what happens when you believe all of these truths? Now you receive that gift of salvation, right? Because remember, we are sinners. We can never save ourselves. So if you believe, what happens? God gives you that free gift of salvation. And not only that, right? Not only that, he is now giving us a down payment, don't you know that? Of this gift of salvation we have now. When you start believing in Jesus and you start receiving Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, God gives you also his what? His Holy Spirit, right? Can you imagine that? I don't know if you, you can actually understand the gravity of what I'm telling you here. Can you imagine God is living in you? Right? You're a sinner, but then because of Jesus, God can work in you and God can work through you. God is in you. That's a very, right? Parang parang grabe yung, yung statement na yun. Na, na you cannot even wrap yourself around that God is living in me, that God is in me through His Holy Spirit. And this Holy Spirit of God, of course, empowers you to live the Christian life. Because the Christian life is not easy, right? The Christian life is never easy. The Christian life is not even difficult. It's not easy. It is not difficult. So ano siya? It's impossible, right? The Christian life is impossible. For, for, for all of you guys who have been a Christian for quite some time, you know what I'm talking about. Madali bang maging Christian? Madali bang maging Jesus follower? No, it's not, right? Sobrang hirap nito. That is why, you know, God doesn't leave us just to live our Christian life alone. He gives us what? The Holy Spirit. That is if, again, you go down the route of what? Believing and receiving this truth. Yun lang naman yun, right? Yun lang naman yun eh. And you know, when you live your Christian life, the Holy Spirit empowers you to change whatever needs to be changed. For sure, sino ba dito, like I told you, di ba, sa B1 in 1 natin, we are in a journey of being transformed, right? Of becoming someone a little bit better every day, right? Yun naman yung gusto natin, di ba? That we can be a, lit, a, a better person a little bit at least every day, right? And you cannot do that on your own unless you have the Holy Spirit. And there's a lot of things, right? I know that you know this. For sure, you are already thinking of something na sana babago ko to, sana I can change this, sana I can change that, right? There's a lot. Maybe you have an issue of pride issue that you would want. Na sana, Lord, can you please remove this pride issue in me, right? Because I'm so prideful, right? Maybe some of you, you have issues of anger. I don't know. Okay, you have issues of anger. Some of you have issues of, of lust, that you've been battling, right? And you've been praying to the Lord, Lord, sana tanggalin mo na tong issue ng uh, my, my struggle for, for lust. But there's another thing that we, I know for sure that we are all struggling with. What's this? Selfishness. Right? All of us, for sure, young and old who are here, for sure, we have this selfishness in us, right? That we have been battling about. That is why, you know, ang... ang uh, message natin today is, di ba? Are you the person who always say, says, deserve ko to, right? <laughs> I deserve or I serve, okay? Now, since we are in this uh, topic of uh, selfishness here, are you, uh, are you the kind of person, I don't know if you can see this here, di ba? May table ako, dapat may upuan ako dito later on eh. So I don't just have the table, I thought meron tayong napkin here. Are you the type of person whose your natural tendency is to just sit here, you take this too, and you just get, okay, ma, what's food today? Okay? Is that your natural tendency na you just sit here, you're just waiting for people to serve you? Is that your natural tendency? I'm not just talking about food, no? This is just an illustration. But is that your natural tendency? Whether it be at fa- in the family, whether it be sa barkada nyo, or even here in church, right? 
Is that your natural tendency? What, what's in it for me? But ako pupunta dyan. Is there something for me there? It's always me, myself, and I. Is that your natural tendency? You're just, you know, you're just waiting for people to serve you. Or is your natural tendency to actually ask someone to sit here and you will serve them? That's why, you know, I deserve. Is that your natural tendency? Or I serve. That is what we, I would like to talk about this afternoon. Now, since we are here in this topic of how selfish, uh, of selfishness, let's do a test, okay? Please bring out your cell phones. This is the only time I'm going to ask you to bring your cell phone after this. Please keep it. Okay, so bring it out. Uh, your, your notes lang naman, you know, okay? Maglista lang kayo or, or text, whatever, okay? So all you have to do is just choose, okay? Either A or B. Yun lang, okay? Just list down. This is, these are just five items, okay? So just to test out how selfish are we, okay? Hindi lang kayo yun, pati kami yun. All right, so how selfish am I? So just choose between the two, okay? First one, would you rather or which do you lean into? Be the smartest person in the room? Or be the most, oops, be the most beautiful or handsome? Ayan. Sige, lista nyo dyan. Sige. Either A or B lang. Okay, number one is A or B. Ayan. Sige, lista nyo. Okay na? Sige. Later on, i-ano natin yan. Let's summarize first. Okay? So, A or B. Okay. Okay na tayo, guys? Okay, number two. Number two tayo. Sorry for, the, for those people who are here. All right. Here's number two. Would you rather, or what's your tendency? Are you a person who has more tendency to tell the truth? Or the more tendency to exaggerate. Yeah. Oh, be honest, ah. Be honest, guys. Are you a person who would always, almost always say the, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Or you have a tendency to exaggerate? Yeah. Sino sa inyo yung mahahabang ilong katulad niyan? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Next sa tayo, letter uh, number three. Okay. Would you rather, I'm excited about this one. Would you rather... That Wi-Fi does not exist or airplanes were not invented. Okay. Ah, oh, sabi niya, ang hirap mag-choose. Sabi niya. <laughs> Grabe, ang hirap mag-choose. Sabi niya. <laughs> okay. Okay na tayo, guys. Ha? Okay. Guys, no copying. Ha? No copying. This is you. Okay? Don't worry. Walang grades to. Okay? Walang grades to. <laughs> sabi nung iba, kaka-exam lang namin. May exam na naman dito. Okay? Sige, oh, number four na tayo, last two. Yan. Would you rather find your true love or win million dollars? Yan. <laughs> Sabi ng iba, pwedeng both. <laughs> Ayan. Yan yung, yung gusto gusto yung topic. Basta love, basta love talaga ang ingay-ingay nyo. No? <laughs> okay. All right, kalma, 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 guys, kalma. Okay, last na tayo, kal last na tayo. Here, let, here's the last. Okay, would you rather never be able to speak again or always be able to speak what is in your mind? Yan, okay. Never be able to speak or will always speak what is in your mind. Okay, all right. Sige. Can you guys please share yung answers nyo sa katabi nyo? Ano yung mga, yung summary lang. Sige, pakita nyo lang. Okay, yan. Before I show you, okay, what's the result? Okay. Ay, sorry, sorry, meron pa palang isa. Sorry, meron pa isa. Okay, may isa pa pala, may isa pa. Okay, last na to, para masaya. Uh, would you rather have photographic memory or able to forget anything you want? Okay. Saya nun, no? <laughs> photographic memory? Or you can choose any any memory that you would want to erase. Why? Parang parang masaya yon, di ba? Siguro siguro di mga nasaktan dito gusto ni letter B ganyan. Grabe talaga pag pag love talaga ang ingay ng elevate, no? <laughs> okay, sige, okay, pwede niyo lang i-share. Share niyo na sa katabi niyo. Okay, ayan. Okay. All right, so here's the result. Okay, here's the result. How would you know how selfish are you? Or are we? Okay, how selfish am I? Here's how you would determine it. If you choose B at least one time, you are selfish enough as we all are. <laughs> okay? So kahit one time mo lang na choose ang B, you are already considered to be a selfish person according to the test. Okay, can I just ask... <laughs> 
Guys, sinong nag-choose ng A lahat? A talaga lahat, promise. Guys, can you... Ha, guys, how to be you, okay? <laughs> Grabe, sana all talaga, okay. <laughs> all right. So, you know, this is just a, a, a simple test, right? A simple test. But this actually shows to all of us, okay, that we are selfish at one point in time, right? That's, that's, we have that particular nature. Whether you agree to it or not, but if you're really going to be honest, you know, all of us, young or old, like I told you, we really have this selfish nature. But the thing is, as we mature, right? As we grow old, as we gain experiences, diba? Nag- nagiging lesser and lesser and lesser. Hopefully, ah, hindi yung pag tumatanda kayo, lalo kayo nagiging selfish. Diba? What we want is as we grow old, as we mature, we become selfless rather than selfish, right? And you know what? Here's the thing. The people who are supposed to be best at this, the most selfless people supposed to be are Christians, right? People who actually profess that they are followers of Jesus. Hindi ba, di ba, sila dapat yung the best at this one? They are supposed to be the most selfless people in the world, right? All Christians are supposed to be choosing I serve rather than I deserve. Right? Diba? But, but all Jesus followers are supposed to be almost all of the time chooses I serve rather than I deserve. And you know, last week, uh, I think two weeks ago pala yata yun, we just remembered, right, the resurrection of Jesus uh, in the Holy Week. And you know, that resurrection, by the way, erased all doubts, right? It, it actually erased all doubts among the followers of Jesus during his time. The resurrection is the single event in history that really proves that Jesus indeed is God, right? If Jesus didn't, if, uh, if Jesus didn't resurrect, we will not really have Christianity. Christianity is a lie. But since Jesus resurrected, as we remember, of course, last week, two weeks ago, that is the single proof that, you know, Jesus is really is the Messiah. And let me just tell you this before I move on to the story that I would like to talk about here today, uh, because this, this has to be clear to all of us. I don't know why you actually believe in Jesus, right? I don't even know why you are a Jesus follower. But get this, get this. If there's someone, if there's someone, like for example, si Caleb, no? For example lang si Caleb here. If Caleb predicts, you know what, Kuya Ronald, tomorrow I'm gonna die. I predict, I predict that, sabi ni Caleb. But you know what, Kuya Ronald, after three days, you will see me again. And it happened. Right? Kung nangyari yun, would you actually believe everything that Caleb will say? Definitely yes, right? Can you imagine someone who predicts his death and then he actually pulls it off and then predicts also that he will rise again after three days? Definitely I will go for whatever that guy says. That is why the resurrection is the single proof that Jesus is God. You know, what you read in the Bible, it's not just literature. It's actually what? It's history. A lot of eyewitnesses actually saw Jesus alive. And they're telling us, you know what? We saw Jesus before. 2,000 years ago, we saw him. He died, but he resurrected. That's, that's, that, what, that's what those first century Christians are actually telling us. Hundreds of people actually saw him. That's why you should believe everything, right? What Jesus actually says. Now, I'm only saying that because the story, the backdrop of our story here today is that the, the event here happens after the resurrection. Okay? It happens. That you need to understand that what, where are these uh, disciples of Jesus coming from? Because after the resurrection, they have found this newly you know, uh, passion and desire to share Jesus. Because before that, before the resurrection, all of them were so disappointed, right? They were following this teacher, they were following this Messiah, and then Jesus died. For sure, everyone, every single one of them is frustrated. Every single one of them is disappointed. But then when Jesus rose up from the dead, they saw with their own eyes, you know what, this, really, this guy, this Jesus really is the Messiah. He is God himself. Just because of that single event. 
so you can understand where are these people actually coming from. So what happens is that, so Jesus now, uh, as he was about to descend into heaven, he gave them instructions, right? So Jesus rose from the dead, and then he gave instructions to all of his disciples before he went up. So the instruction was to make sure that the good news about him, that the good news about his resurrection should be what? Everyone should know about it. That's the instruction, okay? James, Peter, uh, John, and all of the disciples and hundreds of them who are there, please make sure that people would know that I died, but I resurrected. That is the good news, right? That Jesus would, uh, that is the instruction that Jesus was telling them. And so, again, no, here's the question again. If you are someone who saw the resurrected Jesus, and if you're, if you're one of those people who are there that Jesus was giving instruction to, why wouldn't you actually do that? Why wouldn't you follow? If you're that someone who already saw someone resurrect from the dead, like I told you, right? You would do everything that they will ask you to do. So that's what they did. They were in every street corner telling the good news about the resurrected Jesus. So they were telling everyone, you know, we, this Jesus that we follow, he died, but he resurrected again. So they were telling everyone about it. So what happened then after that? Here's where our story begins. Then the high priest and all of, the, and, and all of his associates, these are the religious people of the time, okay? Who were members of the party of the Sadducees were filled with jealousy. So why were they filled with jealousy? Because the movement, this Jesus movement, because everyone was telling about Jesus, right? So they have this found, newfound passion and desire to share Jesus because of what they saw. So they were telling everyone about this Jesus and it was gaining momentum. It was gaining momentum. A lot of people were believing. That is why they were jealous. So what happened? Because of this jealousy, what did they do? They arrested the apostles, meaning all of the people who are telling about this resurrected Jesus, they arrested the apostles and they put them in public jail. Now, I highlighted that public jail just to let you know that this is not the jail that we know of, that it's all cement, you have a bunker, bunker bed there, then you have uh, the door and all that, was, that is locked. It's not that. A public jail during that time is just a hole in, on the ground. It's just a dug up hole on the ground. It's a temporary holding cell so that they can actually talk to you the next day. Can you imagine, right? There is no uh, drainage for that hole. Can you imagine if you are following someone who has been there, right? Can you? Oh, don't imagine na lang. Okay? Like how dirty and filthy, right? That public jail is. All right? So, that, that's where they were placed. No? They were held on that public jail. But during the night, during the night, before even the authorities were able to t talk to them the next day, what happened? An angel of the Lord, right? Came to them and they freed them up. And then the instruction of that angel was to tell these guys, you know what? Please continue whatever you're doing. So as soon as you guys are out from this hole on the ground, I want you guys to do whatever you're doing. And that is to tell and talk about the good news of the resurrected Jesus. And what did they do? They did. In spite of what they are experiencing here, right? Can you imagine, right? Kung ikaw yung nandun, like after this, parang ayaw mo na, di ba? Ayaw mo nang gawin ulit yung ginagawa mo yun. But them, they actually did it, right? They were again out in the streets preaching about this resurrected Jesus. And so what happened the next day? Siyempre, they were caught again, right? So what happened? We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. That's Jesus. We, we, talk, we talked about this, right? Please do not teach about the resurrected Jesus. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching. Can you see this? That many of the people in that particular area is already knowing about the good news about Jesus and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. So what happened after this? Peter, one of the leaders of the apostles, he stood up and he spoke to them, right? And basically, you know what, what Peter was say, uh, telling them? Hey guys, you are 
guilty of this man's blood. And just to summarize, okay, I will not go into the details of what Peter said, but here's the summary of what Peter was telling all of these religious people. Here, you killed him, God raised him from the dead, we have seen this guy resurrected from the, from the dead. Guys, please say you're sorry. Basically, this is what Peter was telling them. You killed him, God raised him from the dead. We have seen him. Say sorry. Repent. Right? So he's giving, Peter is telling them, you guys, you know, you can actually repent. You, know, you can declare him as your Messiah. Because in the first place, you guys are actually guilty. But you know, the religious leaders of that time, they just believe whatever they believe. So they did not, you know, what the route that they took was to what? To object and to reject rather than to believe and to receive. That's what they did. They objected and they rejected. So what happened after this? Instead of just putting them in the hole on the ground, they whipped and they flogged everyone who was telling them about Jesus. Sino dito ang napalo na ng nanay tsaka tatay nila? Yan. Sakit, di ba? Okay. You know the purpose? You know what's the purpose of that weeping and whooping? Okay? From your parents? It's so that you will not do it again, right? That's the purpose of the pain. Right? Because matigas yung ulo mo and, and ayaw mo makinig nung pinalo ka, right? It actually place something in your mind, I'm, I'm not gonna do this again because of the pain, you know, because of that pain. So that's actually the purpose of also this one, but it is not the same. That's why, you know what? Pasalamat kay sa parents, no? The, yung whip nila is ganun lang. Can you imagine? You have barbed wires? You will be, can you imagine if your parents will just flog you with barbed wires? <laughs> you will never do whatever you're doing again, right? But this is what they did to every single one of those disciples of Jesus who was telling the whole streets of Jerusalem, the whole Israel about this resurrected Jesus. This is the same thing, right? What they did with Jesus. This is the same thing as what they did with Jesus, right? So can you imagine again, right? You have, you have hundreds of these people who are talking about the resurrected Jesus, right? And then what, they, what do they do? They let them remove their, their clothes just like this one, what they did to the Jesus, right? And then one after the other, right? One after the other, they whip and they flog all of these apostles, all of these disciples. Can you imagine? Their backs are bleeding, right? Like this one. And you know what? Many of them, by the way, also died of infection. Some of them died because of infection. But here's the thing. As their wounds were healed, I tell you, as their wounds were healed, they're back on the streets. Can you imagine that? It's that the hole on the ground is not going to keep them about telling about who, who this Jesus is. But then again, even the whips here, they're not, it's not going to stop them, right? It's not going to stop them. You see, to willingly suffer like this, right? To willingly suffer like this, you must have a stronger, right? You must have a stronger reason. You must have a stronger motivation than just wanting to establish a religion. Because the people during this time, they just think that these people would want to establish Christianity. And I've mentioned this before, right? That is not the purpose of Jesus why he came here on earth. It's not to establish a religion. They must have a stronger reason for actually doing this, right? So the things, you know, that we are seeing here and reading here in the Bible, you know, right now, they aren't just stories. This is history. This really happened. This is a real account. Eyewitnesses have seen this, right? So, as soon as their backs are healed, they put ointment. Maybe after one week or after two weeks, they're back on the streets. Right? And can you, I mean, can you just imagine, this is their reaction. The apostles left the Sanhedrin. What? Rejoicing. They left, I mean, with, with all of those blood, right? 
They left the Sanhedrin, they left the temple, even rejoicing. Right? Because they had been what? Counted worthy of the suffering, disgrace for the name. You know, when, you, when you're flogged during that time, you should be actually ashamed of yourself because that means that you are a criminal. But for them, it's no. This is an honor, right? For them to suffer. Because they're not suffering for the disgrace of their crime, but they're suffering for the disgrace for the name, right? So they, they, they really have this stronger reason, right? You have this stronger reason. What happened? Day after day, there you go, day after day, in the temple courts, from house to house, they never stopped preaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Grabe yung motivation nila, di ba? Now here's my question for you, especially if you have been a Christian for the longest time, especially if you're someone who professes to be a Jesus follower. My question for you is this, that's your version of Christianity Is it such a good news to you that nothing and no one stops you from sharing it? Is your version of Christianity, is your Christianity such good news to you? Is the news about Jesus being resurrected such good news to you that you can't help it, that you need to share it, and there's no one stopping you, and there's nothing who's going to stop you from actually sharing it? For them, what should have stopped them is the flogging and the whipping and the jail, right? And the good news about us, don't worry, there's no more flogging and whipping, right? There's no, there's no more flogging and whipping. But maybe what, what's, what's, what's in it for you? What's stopping you? That's my question here. Is it because you're shy about it? It's, it's, is it because you're ashamed that you're a Christian? Because it's not a popular thing to do. Right? Because you are, pro- you, are, you are projecting this, you know, I'm a cool guy, I am a cool girl. That's why, no, I cannot, you know, parang is that, corny. Is that what your, is that what your, is that your reason for that? No, or maybe you fear that your friends won't like you anymore, right? You fear that your friends won't like you anymore. And you run as far as what? From them, from any spiritual conversations, maybe. Maybe because you fear that, you know, hindi ka nila kasama na, hindi na kanila kasama sa barkada, right? Or maybe, how about this one? You get so flooded with busyness. Either it be in school or your extracurricular activities, you get so flooded with business that being a Christian is just a secondary thing for you. It's a Saturday thing for you or it's a Sunday thing for you. It's not, it's not really who you are from Monday to Friday. Is that your version of Christianity no, is that your version of Christianity? But like for them, right? Grabe yung dedication, right? Grabe yung dedication. And because of that dedication, what happened? Because of those people, the first century apostles, what actually happened? Here's what happened. In those days, when the number of disciples was what? They were increasing. They were increasing. Now we are about, I don't know, we have about 130, 150 here in this room. For them, because they never stopped talking about Jesus, wherever they will go, there were thousands, right? Thousands of them during that time. And we are still here, right? Christianity is still here, right? And we're still talking about this resurrected Jesus because of the people who never stopped talking about him despite of the things that they have to suffer for him, right? So, what happened? So, there were hundreds and thousands of them, literally, okay? And the, you know what happened? The authorities have given up. Okay, sabi, sabi nila, give up na kami. These guys are, ne- are never gonna stop talking about this Jesus. You're, they're ne- never gonna stop. So, it's okay, okay, you just tell about the Jesus because if this is another scam, because if this is just another false religion, I'm sure the, 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 the religious leaders during that time were thinking, this will die anyway. You know, this whatever they're doing, it's gonna die anyway. But we are still here, right? We are still here. And they were increasing, right? And they were increasing. And as numbers increase, as numbers increase, there was a little bit of a problem that they had. There was a little bit of problem. What was the problem? Here. 
the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews. Okay, let me just cle be clear about the terms. The Hellenist Hellenistic Jews, these are the Christians, okay? At, I mean, this, they are Jews that converted to Christianity, and they are Greek-speaking Christian. And then the Hebraic Jews are the Aramaic or the he Hebraic-speaking uh, uh, Christians. It's just a matter, they're, all of them are Christians, it's just a matter of language. You get the idea? Okay? That's the idea. So what was the problem? Because they were increasing, right? They were increasing. The problem was the widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So that is what's happening. Because many of them, there's a lot of them already, and there's a lot of widows. There's a particular group, especially the widow, who are not being taken care of. So this, there was a management problem in terms of distribution of food. So you see, Christianity is not just about all talk. That's one, one thing that you should uh, take a look at here. Christianity is not just about, no, gathering together, I'm going to talk about Jesus. No, it's about works as well, right? They were taking care of the poor. So Christianity is not just about you being here at Elevate. You know what's, what's real Christianity? is you, whatever you're learning here, you take it outside. You take it outside. You take it to your family. That's what real Christianity is. That is what they were doing. It's not just about all talk. Christianity is not that. They were taking care of the poor. But they were, there was a problem. And you know, at this point, you know what? All of the apostles were trying to do everything. They were preaching in the streets. They were teaching. And they have to take care, right? So what did they do? We have, they have to do something about this problem. What did they do? The 12 gathered all the disciples, okay? together and said, it would, be not, uh, it, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word, meaning teaching and preaching in the streets, in order for us to wait tables. Okay, let me just be clear here. The apostles are not saying, you know what? We are so uh, high up in the hierarchy that we cannot serve or wait on tables, right? That we have to be the preachers. No, that, that's not what they were saying because Jesus made sure that whoever wants to be a leader has to be a servant. That's not the point of the apostles here. The point is that, you know what? We cannot do everything. We are teaching and preaching. Someone has also to do the taking care of the people. That's what they were saying here. We cannot do everything. So what happened? So what they did was to choose seven men from among them who are known to be full of spirit and wisdom. Let me pause here. Let me pause here. Here's a side note. Did you notice that the requirement or the uh, what it was, that the, it, it's not about the skill that they have. They didn't get someone who is good in business management, right? They didn't get someone who's, who's good in administrative skills. But what's, what, what was the requirement of those who are volunteering, who, those who are serving? Full of spirit and wisdom, right? They did not really look into the, the skill of the person, right? It was first about who they are as a person. It's about their being. It's about their relationship with God first. Right? It's about the being first before the doing. It's about the character first before anything that they can actually contribute. Grabe yung ano na no? Yung requirement for, for, for us to volunteer, for them to actually volunteer. So, that's what they did, right? We will turn this responsibility over to them and we will give our attention to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And so, that's what happened. What was the result? Definitely no one was hangry anymore. Right? So definitely everyone gets their uh, portion of food. That's the result. But you know what? What's interesting? What's, what's interesting here is that access that, well, that was the result, but that is not what Acts recorded as the result. Here is what Luke says, okay? Because he's the one who wrote Acts. Here's what Luke says is the result of this. It's not just about giving the food, the result was what? The word of God spread. Hindi niya sinabing, so everyone is now happy because everyone has food. The result was what? Sabi ni Luke, the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. And you might be asking, so what does, the dis what does this distribution of food have something to do, right? With the word of God spreading. For sure, the apostles really did a good job preaching and teaching. For sure. Maybe some of them really were good 
preachers and teachers. That's why many of them actually believe in Jesus. But you know what? The distribution of food that they actually did, it has a very large part. That is why this actually happened. As simple as just distributing food, what was the effect? The word of God spread. Right? This, this would not have been possible if not for the people who what? Who were willingly or who willingly gave their time and effort just to serve food. Can you see this? Can you also see your significance in the body of Christ, in this church, in Elevate? Because some of you are thinking, I don't really have anything to offer. But for them, just as simple as serving food, the word of God spread. So there is no one insignificant, right? Whatever you guys have, whatever you guys can offer, God is going to take that. Right? God is going to take that. As simple as food distribution. What they did was they did what needed to be done in that particular moment. What, 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 does, what does this community need? What does this community need? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to volunteer for that. As simple as that, it's okay. I don't have to be up there, the one preaching and teaching. I don't have to be the one singing here in front. I'm just going to do whatever, what, what this community needs. That's what they did, right? They did what needed to be done in the moment. That actually fueled a what? A movement. Like I told you, we are here. And I can even go as far as what? You know what? We are here because of those people who decided to distribute food. It's not just about those preaching and teaching. Of course, that they did. That, of, of course, contributed, right? But that did not even happen, or that will not happen because of those people who are willingly, who willingly and sacrificially gave their time and effort to distribute food, right? That's what they did. That is what belonging to a church actually means. So again, no, are you, are you a, a type of person who, who is going to be here if you're, if you're deciding, no, especially to all of our students who are here, if you're deciding that Elevate is your church, that you would want to be part of Elevate, that is good and all. But I hope that you will not be someone who will come here Saturday in and Saturday out, and then you're going to sit there, okay, what's in it for me today? Okay, kuya, ano serve mo sa akin? Right? I hope that you will not be that particular member, right? As you are just sitting there and waiting for people to feed you. By the way, we will feed you later on. <laughs> Which is a good thing, right? But I hope, you know, there will come a time that you're going to have to put this down and you're going to have to call on someone, let them sit there, and you serve them. I serve, right? Rather than I deserve. No? That's what they did, right? That's what they did. And you know what? Here is the segue of what I would like to encourage you to do. Today is what we call a Serve 2023. We do this every year, right? We are looking for volunteers for many of the areas, okay, here at Elevate where you can actually contribute. Like I told you, as simple as distributing food, right? The movement grew. We now have Christianity. So there is no small contribution, right? As simple as arranging the chairs, carrying this to that place. No, everything you contribute, I tell you, right? God will really bless this movement. And not just in terms of numbers, you know, you will grow in terms of character as well. So today is Serve 2023. Let me just tell you what are the teams that you can actually volunteer to. Are you good in digital arts? Are you good in photography? Are you good in editing? We have what we call media and marketing, social media and all. We have a team for this one. By the way, we will have a sign up for this. Before we break out into small groups later on, we have a sign-up booth at the back, at, at actually just uh, outside of this hall. All you have to do, if you think this is you, I encourage you to actually go to our uh, booth later on. We also have what we call events and programming team. D did you guys like how, how uh, Kuya uh, Gio and Kuya TJ hosted here? If you think you can do that, you can volunteer for that. If you think you are good with events, right? Uh, pro uh, Programming and all, this maybe is your, uh, uh, is your ministry. Now, by the way, we call this not really ministry. What, what we would like to call this service teams. These are teams wherein you can serve. 
service teams. So events and programming team. How about you would, would you want to be part of the Exalt ministry? Exalt ministry, by the way, is our music ministry. So there's no need more to say, talk about this one, right? Singing and all. Ayan. So please be part of the Exalt ministry. Again, their booth is just outside. Or what if you are the more technical uh, person? You like live broad? The people who are at the back there who are running the show and all of the lights, right? The sounds and all. And the things that you see here, technicalities. Please be part of this one. Again, they have a booth outside. Or how about this one? Host. The host team are the ones who make sure that you are, uh, you feel welcome, that no one is out of place. Later on, for all of the first timers who are here, I would like to invite you. We actually have a welcome area there on this side over there. There are going to be people who will welcome you there. And, and that, that's what they do. If you think also that you, you are a people person, you would like to talk to people, right? So this could also be a ministry for you. By the way, we also have what we call our uh, saints. Saints, by the way, is our dance ministry. If you think you can dance, okay, we will also have a sign-up booth uh, outside. And, and lastly, lastly, we also have what we call next-gen ministry. Next-gen is our children's ministry in church. That's our Sunday thing. If you, if you love children, okay, you don't pinch them and you don't, uh, you know. <laughs> if you love children, please be part also of our next-gen ministry. We would love to talk to you. Uh, there are going to be people outside uh, if you have inquiries, if you have questions about all of this uh, ministry. Now, before I continue, okay, before I continue, can I just tell you that, because like I told you a while back, right? Some of you are thinking, parang wala naman akong talent, parang wala man akong napili kahit isa doon. <laughs> Di ba? Like I told you, there is no small, there is no small service, okay? Like I told you, in, in, in the uh, church of, uh, uh, in the church of God, right? But here's also one thing I can tell you. There is also one area of your life that you can be of service of. Where is that? Yung family niyo. Right? Here's the disaster about someone who is serving. And I don't that you don't get into this disaster. Because some of you maybe, ah, gusto ko talaga mag-serve and all. But I don't want you to be in this particular position na medyo disaster. And here's my point. Bakit siya disaster? You are active here in church, serving and all. But they don't see that at home. If you do that, what are you called? You're a hypocrite, right? And that's the disaster sometimes of serving, right? We would want for you to actually serve here. Like, sobrang, we really need you, we want you to serve here because it will actually, it's actually for you. It's not even for the church, it's actually for you. Like I told you, it will do something in you. It will do something, serving will do something in you and it will do something for you. But again, no, you have also an avenue to serve at home. Please make sure that whatever they see here, the passion and the desire and the enthusiasm that you have in serving here is also the same thing that they actually see at home. Finally, as a reminder, kasi marami sa inyo baka pupunta na doon, di ba? Parang di pa ako tapos magsalta, parang gusto nyo nang pumunta doon eh, di ba? Here's a final reminder, okay? Here's a final reminder for those of you who would want to serve and here's also a great reminder for those of you who are already serving. Here's a reminder. Jesus himself says, you are the light of the world. You know, when, when Jesus says light of the world, he's actually talking to Christians here. No? You are the light of the world, meaning those people who have believed and received, not the people who have objected and rejected. So he's talking to Christians who are serving him and serving in the church. And you know what? Light, no matter where you put it, it will always be evident, right? Like even in this brightly lit room, even the, 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 the smallest, right? Yung, yung, yung napakalit na ilo na yun, you can actually distinguish it, right? And what, what Jesus is telling us, all of us here, is that you as a Christian, you as a Jesus follower, you are a light. And wherever I will place you, if you're really a Christian, people are gonna notice it. That's what Jesus is actually uh, telling us here. God, you know what? Jesus has actually called us and God has actually called us to be different. Differently good, not annoyingly different. 
God has called us to be differently good. You know what? As Christians, as Jesus followers, God has called you to be exceptional in whatever you do. God has called you to be actually excellent. You are supposed to what? To be a standard. You, you are supposed to be a standard in your classroom. You are supposed to be a standard in the family. You are supposed to be a standard dun sa barkada mo. Which means that you do not copy them, but as a Christian, they should copy you. You are the standard of the world, right? And as a Christian, no matter where you're supposed to place, like I told you, you sh- it should be very obvious that you are a Christian. You should stand out. People should not doubt that you are a Christian. That is what Jesus is t- talking about here when he says, you are the light of the world. But the interesting thing here is this one. How can we be light of the world? How will people know that we are a Christian? Is it because I have a, a t-shirt that says elevate? Or is it because I have a t-shirt that says I am a Jesus follower? I am a Christian. Is that because of the verses that you know when they talk about when they talk to you and that you have a lot of things to say, talk about the Bible? Maybe that could be a, a good thing. But it's not just about that. You know, how can you be light of the world? Here's what Jesus says. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your, what? Good works. That's how you're going to be a light of the world for the world. Right? Now here's a hard check here. That's why I place this as a blank. You are called to be a different. You're called to be different. You're called to be a standard. You're called to be exceptional as you do your service either in the family or here in church or here in, or, or, or in your schools, you're called to be exceptional and then do your service, do your good works. But here's a hard check. Good works and what? Why am I doing those good works? Why am I going to serve? What is this serving for? The question here is, why are you going to serve? This is a good heart check, especially if you want to serve and if you're already serving with us. Will you serve because you are longing for appreciation? Will you serve because you know, you're, you're looking for, for someone to really appreciate you and because you find worth in that good works? You find worth in that serving wherever you are serving? Is, is that what you're looking for? Because you feel important because, because of that serving? Will you serve because you are earning God's blessing and favor? Ah, pag nagpakabakit ako, parang Santa Claus, di ba? Para si God, lahat ng healing ko, bibigay niya. Is, is that what your serving is for? Is that what your good works is for? Or maybe some of you, you only want to serve or you only want this to do the good works because you are appeasing, you are appeasing your guilt. Because may kasalanan kay, kay God last week. Ay, magsaserve ako kasi para mabawasan yung kasalanan ko. So I don't know what your reason is, right? I don't know what your reason is. But this is a good heart check. What is that serving for? Or the better question is that, who is that serving for? Right? By the way, I'm not saying for all of you who are already serving with us here. I'm not saying that you won't get tired. Because you will have bad days, right? By the way, mind you guys, we are still people, right? Nagkakairitahan pa rin even those who are already serving the Lord, even with good intentions, right? We, we get tired. We get tired. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. But you should have, well, here's what I'm saying. You should have a greater reason for doing that good works. Not just to be a light of the world because you would want to be noticed. Because gusto mo sikat ka, right? Kasi gusto mo mapansin ka ng crush mo sa Elevate. Right? What is that serving for? What is that for? Here's what Jesus says. You know? He says, oh, sorry. Oh, it's not here. Okay. <laughs> oh, he, sorry for this one. Now, before we, we go to this one, because here, here's the thing, right? Some of you, you volunteer, you serve, you felt good, you repeat. Because it felt good. So what do you do again? You volunteer, you serve, it felt good because you're looking for that appreciation, you're looking for that worth, you repeat. What if, at one point in time, the appreciation 
and the worth, and it's becoming a routine already. Like I told you, because we are going to be doing this two every other two weeks. And there are some things that you're gonna, still going to do every week, right? When you serve with us here at Elevate. It's going to be a routine. And when you don't get this, you felt good. Sometimes the disaster is this. You volunteered, you served, you felt tired, you repeat. I will volunteer again, I will serve, I'm so tired. And then you repeat. And then I will volunteer again. You serve, then you feel tired again, then you repeat. Until such time, what happens? You resign. Why? Because you don't have a stronger reason for this one. Because your reason here is that so that people may see my good works and they will appreciate me. So that people may see my service and I will feel good about myself. What, here's, here's what Jesus said. People will see your good works and they will give glory to your Father who is in heaven. That's the stronger reason, right? That's the stronger reason that you should have. And this is what only counts. I am sorry to tell you, but this is what only counts. You're serving, it's useless. It's going to be useless if this is not your purpose, if this is not what you are aiming for, right? Again, no? You don't want to be in the position that as you serve, you don't want to be in a position that as you serve, instead of drawing closer to God, what happens? You're moving farther and farther away from Him, right? Because you're looking for that appreciation. That's the only thing that you want for yourself. So instead of drawing closer to God, you are moving farther, farther and away from Him. You know, if there's any blessing, if there's any blessing that you get from serving, it should be that you put a smile on the face of your Heavenly Father. If there's any blessing, if there's any greater blessing that you get from serving, it should be that you become more and more like Jesus, right? You give glory to God, to your Father in heaven. So, for those of you who are wanting to serve, and those of you who are already serving, as we end, I would want for us to actually read this and then think of what I've just mentioned to you, that that is your purpose in serving. That is the purpose of the good works. So let's all read this together. Here we go. You are light of the world in the same way. They may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this afternoon. Thank you, O God, for Serve 2023, Lord. Uh, we pray, Father, that uh, there will be a lot of people who will be signing up, Lord, for the ministries that we actually uh, need uh, to be filled up, Lord. But then again, Lord God, we just offer to you, Father, the hearts of everyone who would be serving and those who are serving as well, Lord God, that they are not serving just for the sake of I deserve, not just for the sake of they want something from it, Lord God. Although I know, Father, that you are a God who blesses us, Lord God. But may it be, Lord God, that people motivated to serve as all of the students who are here this afternoon Lord God that they will serve because they want to put a smile on their face